Alright, so welcome back for another tutorial, I guess, in Maya. For this video, we're going to go over just a simple introduction to bump mapping. Uh, basically, what bump mapping is, is it allows you to emphasize the detail of your textures to give it more of a realistic look. I have a brick wall right here, and this is, with this brick wall, you know, it's a simple 2D texture, but when I apply a bump map to it, it really emphasizes the detail. So, basically, when you bring it into, you know, you know your movie file or scene file, it will give it that more 3D dimensional look, and then it's not going to look so flat and mundane. So, this is with the result of a bump map, which you know you can see that you know with the bump map you can get all this really interesting detail from the concrete to the brick and then just some of the stains right here on it. Now this is the result with bump map, but let's see it without one. And there you go. So without a bump map applied to the texture, you know, this doesn't look very natural and then it just seems like you just slapped it on there. It didn't think any, you know, twice of it. And that sort of kind of, you know, doesn't make it as interesting to look at and then also doesn't give it that, you know, that realistic natural feel to it. Like you wouldn't be able to put your hand on that brick wall and say to yourself, "Gosh, that you know, you know that doesn't look right." Whereas if you apply a bump map to it, you know, f you know, you can tell yourself that looks real, that looks believable. And that's going to make my you know model or um, or whatever the heck you're trying to make the wall that much more interesting to look at and give it more life to it. So it's a real simple process on how to do this. It really is. You, the thing you do need to know is you have to know Photoshop fairly well, especially when it comes to texture artists. You know, who do this for a living. I'm certainly not one myself. I'm more in the scheme of modeling. Um, you know, objects, sort of still life environment. So this isn't really my expertise, but I do know enough to where I can give you a brief introduction to how to do a, a simple bump map. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and see how I got to this point. So let me just exit out of here. And then of course, it's just a simple wall that I applied a, uh, a simple uh, brick texture to it with a Lambert material. So let me just go ahead and break that connection. And then I added a light to it. So the real magic though happens in Photoshop. So why don't we just go ahead and just dive into that. So here is the texture that I found um, on CG Textures. You can go ahead and download it yourself. Or if you want, you can find something better on Google Images or whatever the heck you search for textures. But this obviously will do. So the first thing you're going to want to do is um, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you have a fairly large high quality resolution photograph. The only reason why I say that is because if you go with something that's a little low res, the detail isn't going to be well um, seen. And then also just the fact that if, it, if it's low res, then you're not going to, you know, it's not going to do you any justice by having, you know, small detail having, you know, you'd have to, you know, that's sort of microscopic that you'd have to zoom on in with, you know, just to look at and it's not going to really do any, do you any good and then you won't be able to celebrate that fine detail. So anyway, so make sure you find yourself a high res quality you know, image and then if you want to, before you, I guess, dwell into it, if you want to fix this up, you can go ahead and go into filter, you know, offset, and then you can sort of change exactly where you want it to start at. Like, you can see that the, the whole image is flawed because you have this repeating seam line right here that sort of kills it. And this is where you'd have to really rely on your Photoshop skills to hide that kind of detail. Like, you know, for me, you know, if I wanted to hide that detail, I would just kind of select this section right here and copy it, and then I'd paste it. And then what I would do is then I would just kind of drag it on here and didn't do as much work as I could as far as using the clone stamp, the uh, spot healing brush, just to hide that detail. The trick with doing this with getting that perfect texture is to make it seem like you never edited it. In essence, you don't you want to make it as as 
air free as possible without anyone trying to notice. If you have the, if you have something that's very noticeable like the steam right here, people are going to see it and it's going to suck. So that's the trick with when it comes to editing and stuff like this. All right, so for the bump map, we're going to go ahead and go to image, and we're going to go to grayscale. Now, the reason why we're going to go into grayscale is because with a bump map, we wanted to emphasize the the detail of it, whereas we're going to basically increase the values of the white, and then we're going to decrease the value that is also that is black. So, sort of to kind of show you, let me. Sh do something really quickly. Let me go into my brightness and contrast tab. I'm going to want to probably decrease the brightness up kind of quite a bit. And then for the contrast, I'm going to want to increase this a little bit more just to sort of emphasize that the, that the white of this image. So this is a fairly decent start. Um, as you notice kind of with this, with the image of the brick wall we have sort of these weird stains right here you could obviously fake those yourself by you know all you have to do is go into your you know burn tool dodge tool and then just sort of emphasize where exactly you want stains so if you want something like right here if you want something right here or something right here you would do that and the reason why you would make them you know you want to brighten them up because that's where the value um, would be and then also just the fact that that's where you would want to see the most detail. So the more white you have on the image the more value it's going to have therefore the more detail whereas anything that's black is going to have less detail therefore less value. So now let's go ahead and just tweak it a little bit more so let's go into our curves tab and see what we can do with this maybe just decrease it with more white or if we want to go a little higher in the black that's fine and then we can sort of add in another dot right here just to emphasize the you know the white value so it's really all in essence eyeballing it yourself like if I were to do this then you would get no detail you get you get nothing out of it but if I were to do something like this then you would get a little bit more detail as far as like with this right here like this area around this brick like the concrete would definitely protrude out extensively because the value is higher in this area than it is in this area so you would get more detail so just kind of find your ground I don't know I could probably cancel out of that and just do it again it's sort of eyeballing it you have to really have a you know eye for it until you get exactly what you're looking for I'm not the best at this at, by any means so this is just sort of a demonstrative purpose at this point so you don't have to necessarily go with what I go with but this is exactly what you would want to do if you wanted to go with something in order to obtain a nice decent background for a bump map so alright so I think I would be pretty content with this so then after you've done all your editing you would want to go ahead and then just save it um, the file name I would go with would be probably either be a JPEG. The only reason why I wouldn't recommend a Targa in this instance would be Targas will not uh, will give you an uncompressed file. However, the file size will be astronomical. So you would go with something as simple as this would probably only be either a, a megabyte or two would give you with a Targa 20 megabytes 30 and that to me doesn't seem you know practical unless you really really want to get something high res so like if you're working with you know a 1024 2048 by 2048 um, resolution then I probably would go with a Targa but for something that's probably not going to be very you know that's something that's not very important why you bother so just go with the JPEG for the sake of expediency and file size so I already saved it for a file name I would probably just go with either bump underscore brick wall um, or whatever the heck naming scheme you want to go with and then just save it and we can go from there so I already saved something previously so I'm just gonna go ahead and quit out of Photoshop and then we're just gonna go back into our settings here for our brick wall so obviously with your brick wall with the texture you've applied to it you're gonna to want to go into your bump mapping settings right here 
So let's click that checkered box and let's add in a file. And then we're going to want to go into bump value. Click that box. Same thing. Sort of just adding in a, the same way you do with a file or with a texture. So that's what I went with. Now with a filter type, you know, you can leave it at that and not think anything of it. However, I've noticed that if you turn this off, the blur sort of goes away. So what ends, what ends up happening is that the filter type with a quadratic ends up putting a blur on it and it sort of kind of, I guess, doesn't do any justice when it comes to detail. So whenever it comes to you adding a bump map, you know, it's your choice, but I usually try to just turn that off because I don't want a blur on it. Otherwise, it just doesn't, it seems like you, you lose more detail. So. so once you have done that, you're pretty much all set except for one more thing. You have to go into your bump depth value right here. Now if I were to render this out right now I would probably get something really funky. Watch this. As you can see the the detail of the bump map is so exaggerative and it just it really is too high and so what ends up happening is it makes the it makes the wall seem very unrealistic and also just it, the detail is way too strong. So what we would want to do is we would want to decrease the value of the bump map. So let me go ahead, exit out of this. So for the bump depth value, let's go ahead and make this to a point, I don't know, two, just to see what the difference is. So let's go ahead and re-render this out again. And as you can see, just from decreasing the value, we went from something that totally blew it up to something that makes it way more natural, way more interesting to look at, so it's not so strong. And in fact, even if we wanted to, we can go ahead and decrease the value even more, or not, as, not even more, but rather um, just a little bit more. So let's say instead of 0.2, we can go with 0.15. So it's basically all in essence your choice, you know, it's all just eyeballing it, making sure that, you know, what you see is ultimately what you want. And I think this to me looks just about right to where I think I would probably stick it with this value. And as you can see, just with adding the simple bump map to it, you get this really nice added detail that makes the the texture stand out even more. So if you're wanting to go for something that is more photorealistic or if you're wanting to go with something that's kind of like you know that Pixar DreamWorks style look with with the detail I mean even if you watch the movies you can see the detail that they add into it and it's just it's just a matter of playing around with these bump map values and then just the matter of all the other values all the other um, features you can add to it, like a normal map and then a specular map which ultimately with a spec map you would be able to get a nice shine to this so let's say it rained um, you know it, it, it started to rain again then the brick wall would be a lot more shinier in a sense and then you'd get that nice glow effect to it which would definitely bring it out even more so um, for this part I think if you wanted to zoom out you would then have to sort of eyeball it yourself and say, well, if I zoom out, does it still retain the, um, the amount of detail that I want? And it still pretty much does. I mean, even with just this, it still looks fine. Um, in fact, if you even if you zoomed out even more, you would have to probably go ahead and increase the value, but still just zoom out a little more and just eyeball it. So depending on what, what exactly you're aiming for, you know, this could definitely work both ways. So, but this is pretty much it as far as what you get with a basic um, bump map. So, and then it's just about a matter of just lighting it too. Like I only have a, a point light to it. If I wanted to add, let's say, like a, a spotlight to it, um, you know, this is where you'd have to go in and just. And then again, it's still it's just a matter of what are you what are you looking for? What are you trying to achieve through this uh, through this lighting scheme? So same lighting scheme setup I'd go with. Probably a decreased intensity of maybe either 0.4 or 0.5. Um, let's see, shadows. If I had objects around, I'd put in a ray trace and then just play around with that. So, or if you want, you can go ahead and maybe aim this a little bit higher. 
and then decrease it to about a 0.3. Lighting in and of itself is an art too. Texture arting is a whole separate, you know, it's a whole separate um, section, and then just lighting itself is a whole separate art in and of itself. So it's just a matter of what you're good at, and then how to be, you know, make use of it to the best of your ability. So why don't we just render this out one more time and see what we can get? Um, you know, still with even with just the an added bonus of the light, it still gives it a little bit more detail. So it's just a matter of what you're trying to go for. Obviously, this isn't the best texture because, I mean, just this, this right here, if you can see, um, you know, the texture doesn't really, the texture is way off, obviously, because the, 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 the texture itself, um, I guess, doesn't, the, the resolution of it, I guess, does not um, withhold to this sort of playing field. So, because it's so stretched out, so if I were to, I guess, maybe go like this, then yes, it would look a little bit better. Or what I'd have to do is I'd have to go into my texturing texture editor, and then just sort of play around with it until I get what I want. So, obviously, though, this isn't the best looking brick wall, but still, it's something better than what I could find. So, I mean, there's probably obviously better ones, but it's just a matter of um, you know, going into Photoshop, tweaking it yourself. So, but that is pretty much it for this bump map tutorial. So, if you have any questions or concerns, let me know. If there's anyone who is probably hit more knowledge on this than I do, um, please share any information that you would have as far as making this look better. Obviously, this is a, it's just a matter of you know going in in Photoshop, tweaking it, going into Maya, and tweaking it. It's, it's tedious work, but it's ultimately the difference between something that's plain and boring to something that's obviously that can stand out and is photorealistic. So but that's all I have for you. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.